Good morning, Revolution, and welcome to Good Morning Revolution. See, I got it this time. Hi, everybody. Good morning. What's going on? Hello. I can't hear you. Good morning. Good morning, Revolution. That's better. That's better. So uh, it's been quite a week. Each week has been really, really packed. The uh, uh, lot of executive orders are taking place. Um, and I saw the Department of Homeland Security issue a warning yesterday, the threats of terror and right-wing violence uh, because people are upset about the election. And it's the, it's the first saw time. Mr. McCartney went to, down to Florida the other day. Scott, you said something? Yeah, yeah, it's the first time that um, they've issued an alert for domestic terrorist threats. Huh. First time, first yeah. time. Um, and uh, I don't know why, because Timothy McVeigh blew up the building in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And they knew January 5th what was going to happen on January 6th. So. And they did nothing so. about it. They've, mm -hmm. been, they, they've known about it before January the 5th. Exactly, been, right. They, they were involved in planning it. Rosanna, and you're muted, Rosanna, you need to unmute. They they were involved in planning it, which is why there was no protection uh, to the Capitol. Am I right or wrong? Yep, you're right. Joe, you, were, you asked me a question a while back. Um, is the, you know, what's the name of the thing we're facing? What's the thing we're fighting? Is it is it fascism or terrorism? Um, and I thought that was a really interesting question. And I, I kind of wanted to, to raise it here in this context. You know, what's, um, you know, do we need a, a, a domestic terrorism bill or do we need something? Or what's the difference? Well, I mean, I think that um, fascism, terrorism is a, a feature of, of fascism in its classical form. I mean, Dimitrov called it the open terroristic dictatorship of the most reactionary sections of finance capital. That sounds like a little bit formulistic, doesn't it? <laughs> but anyway, it's a it's a feature it's of, but I think that politically the question is correct, Anita, that um, we're talking about a, a political tendency that is inherent in capitalism, mm -hmm. that if not arrested will, it's not inevitable, it, it, it will result in dictatorship and repression of democracy. Exactly. And unusual uh, changes in government. And so do you fight that, uh, Anita, by a law or do you fight it by mass struggle? I think you fight it on all fronts. I think Dimitrov's um, formulation may be uh, stilted, but it's also extremely precise. He really, he really nails it exactly. Uh, what's going on, you know, in the in the economy, the political economy, and how it's led to this. And I think that it is um, connected with uh, the the most uh, repressive sections of the ruling class. And I I think we do have to fight it on both fronts. Legally, I think uh, you know uh, uh, definitely laws should be passed, but also the the movement itself should be uh, aware and uh, and fighting back against it. And I think in increasing de the, the democratic uh, rights of people will, will help us do that too. But with respect to a law, Anita, there's fear that if you pass a law like they did with the, what was that, Scott, the McCarran Act or the Smith Act? The Smith Act was oh. initially passed against the Nazis, but then used against us. Mm. And so therefore, there's a lot of hesitation because the fear is that you know, you can go after them today, but they'll be coming for you in, tomorrow morning. Well, we should be going after them for the laws they've already broken, uh, namely the the the, uh, the insurrection on the sixth of January. Um, and I think the 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 Congress people who are complicit in that should be held to account as well. No doubt about that. No doubt about that, Michael. I think that there needs to be a national commission, all people's commission, set up. Uh, by Congress and uh, including, but you can't limit it to Congress. It should include the trade union, the women, youth, African American, Latino, Asian, and they need to look into what the hell happened on uh, uh, January the sixth, uh, like they did for September eleventh. 
Did they do, you know, did they do that for September? They yeah. did that. They, they put a commission together for that. And so that's what that's what would make sense. And I'm all for, you know, a law which could, you know, stop them. But I am also concerned, looking back to the summer and the repression that we faced, um, participating in the Black Lives Matter, um, you know, protests. I could see how, you know, to, to make a compromise, you know, Biden and the Democrats may have to come down on all kinds of protesters, you know, who, who, who protest on federal, uh, you know, grounds. But that, that just makes more room for the mass movements and the struggle on the ground, right? Um, I'm personally very inspired by a video I saw last night of our comrades in Brazil uh, going out on their balconies and marching in the streets saying, out, you know, fora Bolsonaro, get out, Bolsonaro, get out. And so we, you know, came out in the streets with that same vigor, you know, uh, protesting peacefully, even if it's on our balconies and our rooftops, you know, staying socially distant. Um, I think it would be really powerful because it was if, if January 6th proved anything to us, it's that the right wing is much more organized uh, than we thought, right? And so we have to, you know, double, triple, quadruple that. I don't know how organized. I mean, I, I know that they're organized, um, but that coup was a little bit of a fiasco, uh, Scott. Um, you know, it seems to me like somebody didn't show up. You well, know? I, think there's, I think there's a certain... Um, inflated sense of competence among a lot of these extreme right terroristic fascistic elements um, that where you know they they've been they planned a coup out in the open on social media um, and I think they they've been kind of allowed to do things like that for so long they've been allowed to break the law and threaten people without. Uh, repercussions uh, for so long that they just assumed that they would be able to uh, to do this, um, and you know, uh, it's uh, an, another attempt is not going to be that sloppy. I I, I don't think. Well, we'll see. Hopefully, there won't be another uh, attempt, Rosanna, and that depends on the level of the fight back and the ability of the new forces in the Congress and in the administration, but not just limited to them, because I think you just can't, it's a mistake to leave taking initiatives against the right and on behalf of the people to the politicians. So the big question is what kind of action is there gonna be? Rosanna, does the Poor People's Campaign have any activities planned over the next couple of months? Um, are they meeting and, and uh, yes. discussing these issues? Very much so. They're meeting, they're uh, reviving the Moral Mondays online. Mm. So uh, starting February 1st. And, uh, you know, I think it's very true. It's the people's movement, once again, that, that provided this win, that is providing the executive orders that's allowing these executive orders to take place. So, uh, you know, we can't, we can't discount the people's movement. We can't discount our power. And so everybody who was involved in this election cycle should stay involved, should stay active and continue the fight. Uh, here in California, uh, there's the, um, uh, there was a fight to dismiss um, rent for a year uh, and it just it and it's just it'll be signed by the governor today. Oh, wow. So that's starting in April of last year of 2020. Uh, all rent will be uh, all rent will be dismissed. That's if I'm oh. I'm understanding the whole thing right. But yeah, and so that's but that one once again that right after the elections, we were on the phone, we were on texting, uh, calling people to call their senators and assemblymen to uh, to pass this bill. So, um, you know, it's not gonna solve everything, but uh, it's, once again, it's the people's movement has made this possible and it's a big victory. That'll be a big relief. I'm moving to LA. <laughs> <laughs> not pay rent for you. I can take a vacation with that yeah. guy. Uh, <laughs> no doubt about it, no doubt about it. But Anita, the, yeah. uh, uh, we're calling for a 100 day uh, push for a better world. In fact, we're having everybody who's watching, we're having a town hall meeting on Tuesday night at eight o'clock. 
Right. I want to invite everybody to come, show up, bring your grandmother, your father, your daughter, your sister, your neighbor, your lover, your coworker, whoever, to that meeting. 100 Days for a Better, better World. Mm -hmm. Is Ohio mobilized around the first 100 days? I think we're ready to go. I, I understand that there's going to be a big push uh, through the using, well, uh, AFL-CIO uh, will be behind it, but for the PRO Act in particular in Ohio. And I think that is a, that's a, that's a bill or a, a, an effort that everybody can get behind and that really resonates with um, Ohio voters, whether they voted Republican or Democratic in the last election. I think everyone can get on board with, uh, uh, with the PRO Act. And with that will the allow for greater election. union organizing? For excuse me? That will allow for greater union organizing. Exactly, it will overturn right to work, which is huge. Um, and uh, in many uh, other states, Ohio doesn't happen to be a right to work state at this point. Um, Not yet. But it will right. Well, it will never be if we get this pro act passed. Mm -hmm. So, um, so it would be really it would be excellent for for helping workers organize themselves to bargain collectively. But what sense. about bipartisanship, Anita? I hear that uh, Mr. Portman is resigning. Yes. Not going to run again. Is it? Is it? Is it too hot to try? And, and, uh, he he just recognizes that he would be bored in a Senate that's really controlled by the other party. Um, he he's it, been a very. I mean, he's been a very. He's a very moderate voice. But, but it, it really every policy that he endorses is as conservative. I think he, he uh, supported Trump uh, 88 or 90% of the time. So he's a very far right conservative and, and I'm happy to see him go. We're, we're, we're really glad that he's resigning. It at least open up uh, some possibilities for 2022. So we'll see. Um, Michael, is, is the Republican party a political party in the ordinary sense now? In your opinion, I mean, um... I don't think so. I don't think it's regular by by any means. I guess I had a bit of hope when uh, they were trying to get the second impeachment through, uh, but only ten representatives um, showed up for that, and I believe only um, five senators, something like that. Um, and so that shows me that there is no quote unquote moderate Republicans, and the reason why I know that is also because this out of the 75 million people who voted for Trump in this last election, his polls are up. His polls are up, um, you know, after everything that's happened, you know, with him getting, uh, going out of office, uh, labeling Cuba a terrorist uh, country, calling on a mob and kind of empowering them to storm the Capitol. So it doesn't make sense. I think that it's not a normal political party now that Trump's out of the picture by any means. Uh Michael has pitched the ball directly in your direction. It's a fast ball and it's coming across home plate at a hundred miles an hour because you said that not all Trumpsters are Trumpsters. How could that be if his support, I'm confused. You see that thing confused. How could that be? We need mental. Huh? We need to dismantle the apparatus of the, the political apparatus of the extreme right, which is inseparable from the Republican Party. I think that there are a lot of people who um, who indicate support for Trump, um, who voted for him and who continue to support him. Um, but if that, you know, if the coup plotters and their backers and their funders and the media networks that you know, organize them, the, the monopolies that control those, if those were broken, um, you know, that the organization is not coming from, uh, it's not coming from the grassroots uh, mm -hmm. at all. It's, it's coming from the ruling class and it has to be attacked there at its origin, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can agree with that. But what I'm asking is, do those forces have such a magnetic electric uh, grip on the masses of the people who support that it seems like there's like this huge cult of 73 million people who are just blinded by racism and, and misogyny and, so think, and nationalism 
and chauvinism and hatred that when uh, they try to overthrow the government, instead of it being a shattering of that uh, magnetic electric grip, it widens it and deepens it. It's, I mean, in a certain sense, their, their job, the job of the, of the right is easy. You know, we're in a crisis, people are looking for answers. And if you're pushing an answer, the, you know, capitalism, capitalist society is tilted in the direction of white supremacy, in the direction of male supremacy, in the direction of homophobia and national chauvinism and all those things. So if you, if, you know, organizing people around those ideas, you're pushing a ball downhill, right? Um, but that's made even easier when, you know, when there isn't a, a strong uh, working class left. Um, so I think as Marxists, we have to recognize, yeah, there are huge obstacles, but um, the, the interests of the working class do not align with those of the right. They don't align with white supremacy, with male supremacy. Um, and uh, regardless of the challenge of the work, we have to be there um, doing it, talking to people. Because in the end, people, people talk to, respond to people that they trust. Um, if we're out there talking to people who trust us, they can be moved um, more than they can by, you know, a, a talk radio host or a, a Fox News. Uh, so people have to stand up and be counted. Rosanna, I saw, I posted an article yesterday from the, I think it was the Hill or Politico or one of, that tens of thousands of Republicans uh, in key states are leaving the Republican Party after the coup which kind of goes against this idea that Michael put forward. Not that you're wrong, Michael, you're right, but there is movement in, in the other di direction. Some people, particularly according to this article, Rosanna, in the, in the uh, suburbs are breaking with the Republican party. They say, I don't want no part of this. That's a positive development, no? I would hope so. It all depends on where, you know, where they plan to go. Uh, and, and, you know, I've heard that Trump wants to start his own party. Oh, no. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully they, you know, they don't, they don't go that in that direction. And I agree. I think, you know, a strong left, a strong people's movement and continue to push Biden to provide what it is that the American people need, uh, is, is key to where they're actually going to go. Um, so I think, you know, we, we've got to keep pushing forward. Lightning round, the breakup of the Republican Party, the split be, would be a good thing or a bad thing for the country. Scott, good thing or bad thing? Good. Good. Anita, good thing or bad thing? Good thing. Good yeah. thing. Too good. Michael, good thing or bad thing? Absolutely good. Absolutely good. Rosanna, good thing or bad thing? <laughs> I'm not sure. I, I would lean towards good but uh you know it all depends on what's gonna where they where they go or how, what's the next step so right it's an important point because most of them uh who left the republican party and there are several states like arizona pennsylvania there were five states according to this article became independents and they say that most independents are closet republicans they just, you know, don't want to mm. indicate. Uh, so, um, so they're still like ideologically conservative, um, but you know, they're distant enough to say, "Well, I'll think about it a little bit more." I think it's good too. So, you know, that's five. I think that's the first time all of us have agreed on <laughs> anything. You think they think all communists, Reds think alike. No, we have very different opinions about. Of course, mine is always right, and everybody, is, everybody and Rosanna's is equally right. Huh? Say so Rosanna's equally right. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> the chairs. It's uh... that's yeah. right. That's co-chairship. That's right. No doubt about that. Um, mm -hmm. Rather than thou, rather than me. Well, uh, I think that just about does it. Tuesday, we are, oh, is there, now, Tuesday is the next big event, 100 Days for a Better World Town Hall. Oh, and now Sunday, this coming Sunday, no, we have CJ. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. DJ holding forth. What is Marxism? Um, a Marxist analysis. A Marxist analysis. How you think dialectically, how you put the framework together. That's going to be really important. And how do you, how to change the world? And how to change it. Philosophy has only interpreted the world in various ways. The point, however, is to uh, uh, change it. We have to fight, fight, fight for the next 100 days. Don't give up. Uh -huh. Speaking of the, that town hall you mentioned, and also of CJ and the need to change the world, um, the PW is uh, in, you know, facing some real challenges right now um, because of the, the economic crisis associated with the pandemic. You know, the, its, its revenue has, uh, its income has decreased quite a lot. Um, and to keep it going, uh, we, you know, it, there's a fund drive going on. Uh, we're asking people to please um, contribute to support uh, the people's world. Um, this this great, um, you know, uh, platform for independent working class journalism and, and Marxist analysis. Um, this tool for building the movement. So it's really how do you do that? We want we're asking for one hundred dollars from five hundred people. One hundred dollars if you can. Why don't you get that six hundred dollar check? Give us a hundred. Why not? A hundred dollars from five hundred people. Where do you do that? You can go to peoplesworld.org. Click on the donate button. Go to peoplesworld.org. Click on the and and you're given to the People's World is an award-winning uh, uh, news service. Anita. Yeah, founded in 1924. And this year we got seven awards. I even got one. I got an honorable mention. <laughs> My honorable, uh, Trump proletarian billionaire. The proletarian, I got an honorable mention. I was like, honorable mention? But no, I'm happy. I wanted the gold star. No, I wanted the red star. But this association is a labor association. So they're not giving out uh, red stars. They're giving out gold stars, though. I'll, I'll take that. You know. Anyway, thanks everybody for watching. We're just rambling at this point, and we will see you uh, same time, same station. Stay uh, strong. Stay safe. Stay in the fight. Talk to you later. Bye. 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 Oh, that was fun. <laughs>